Rigging Station. Brought to you by Diamond Fishing, the finest monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided fishing line. Hi, and welcome to this episode's Rigging Station. Captain Carlos and I are aboard our CB370Z. We're out fishing the edge, doing some planer fishing. Really an effective technique has to be in your arsenal as a South Florida angler. Remember that planers are rated by the size of the lead, not by the size of the plate. So this number eight planer, obviously eight ounces. Again, they come in a variety of sizes, a three ounce planer, and you're gonna adjust accordingly in order to penetrate the depth that you're looking for. It's really important how you rig that planer, and there's a variety of different ways to do it. You can fish the planer off a cleat with a breakaway rubber band type of scenario to your running line. Another way to do it, and the way that I like to do it, is to rig that planer in line. Okay, this is the way it's been done for decades. It's part of the fun of planer fishing is hand lining those fish to the boat. The way we rig, relatively simple. Our reel is loaded with 80 pound braid versus mono. The braid cuts through the water much easier. The braid itself is finished off with a heavy duty ball bearing snap swivel from Diamond Fishing Products, which is connected right to the front of the planer. It snaps right to the front of that planer right there. Very, very simple. Off the back side of the plate is where we're gonna connect our leader. And what we do is have a yo-yo here, just a plastic spool with a 100-foot leader. It's 50-pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon, 100 feet long, with a small little 75-pound snap swivel on either end, on both ends of the leader. What's really vital here is the rod. You're putting a tremendous amount of strain on this outfit when you're trolling up to 10 knots with these larger planers. So you've got to have the right rod. We custom built a couple of planer rods specifically for this application. They're eight foot long, so you've got plenty of distance there. It's got a relatively soft tip, but there's plenty of backbone, plenty of backbone, and that's what's really important. It's an e-glass rod, it's not a graphite rod. You're not looking for sensitivity here, you're looking for strength. The bottom of the rod has a gimbal so it can lock right into the rod holder, a slick butt on the bottom so it's easy to pull up and out of the rod holder, an aluminum reel seat, Fuji turbo guides, they can withstand the abrasion from the braid. You don't need roller guides, you know, keep it simple, but do it right. 